Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're doing properties. So we're going to start off inside of a person class, so you can make one of those if you'd like. But you don't need to copy this code here if you don't want to. We're just going to use it as a quick example. So over the course of the last few videos, we've talked about fields, we've talked about methods, and we've talked about getters and setters that let us access these private fields for encapsulation. But we also mentioned that there's a better way to do it, and that's properties. So if we separate these, let's take last name and let's put it down here. So we have our set of first name private field, and then a getter to get it, and then a setter to set it. And then we have the same thing for last name. And you see that's, that's about 20 total lines of code there. So let's start with first name and let's create a property. So we're going to want it to be public, to be accessed. It's going to be a string, and we'll call it first name. Now, a property, you see it's already suggesting it, has a get method inside of it. So then we're going to get our first name, and then below that, we are going to set our first name. So we don't have to have separate methods with this property because this first name has a built-in get and set. You can also see that in the setter, you have access to this keyword value, which is what is passed into the property when it is assigned to. So if we go to program and we create us a person, and we say person.firstName and we set it, what's going to happen is when this first name gets set here, it's going to automatically run the setter method of first name and value is going to be what we passed in right here. So now we've eliminated the need for this getter and setter altogether, but we still need this private variable here. Using a property this way is useful if you need to do something inside the getter or the setter. So say you need to check first name for something specific before you set its value or maybe you want to update a field on your user interface when this value gets set and that would look something like first name equals value and then you would do something like update ui with your value something along those lines but many 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 times that you will be programming you do not need to do anything inside the getter or the setter you just need them available to you and if you're doing that, we can use what's called an auto property. So I'm going to block comment this out. I'm going to say property. And then I'm going to say auto property. Auto properties are one of my very favorite things about C Sharp because of how easy they are. So once we have our public string first name, all we have to do is add a get semicolon space set semicolon and close our block. Now these usually look pretty confusing to beginner programmers, but hopefully since we've gone over manual getters and setters and regular properties, this will come pretty simple to you now, because what this does is it creates an automatic getter and an automatic setter that has its own private variable in the background. So C Sharp automatically is going to create one of these for you, and this right here is automatically going to compile just like that would compile. So all you need is this one line of code to do all of this code here. So let's replace this code with one line and let's do it with the shortcut because the shortcut is so nice. So all you have to do is type prop for property and hit tab tab. It'll automatically highlight the type so you can start typing. Once you have your type, you hit tab tab again and it will highlight the name where you can start typing your name and once you're done with your name press enter enter and it will go to the next line so prop tab tab type tab tab name enter enter and you can enter properties really quickly this way okay so we can get rid of all of this now we'll leave this here for our reference so now we have a first name last name and age all with getters and setters we've saved about 27 lines of code. Now let's go see how we use them. Luckily, how we use them is exactly like how we use fields. So all we have to do 
is the same thing here. And or if we wanted to create them with our initializer, we could go straight to our code block with a semicolon and we could set them this way as well. Just like that. If we wanted to get the information, we could say that. And if we needed to change it again, we could access it directly like that. So now you might be thinking, doesn't this break the encapsulation that we learned about before, which is why we use the private variables to begin with? And you could be right. So if we were trying to encapsulate our first and last name to where it's not changeable from the outside, we can do that as well. So let's go back in here. Let's create a constructor. Let's make it take first and last. And let's set first. And let's set last. And now what we want to do in our auto property is create a private setter for first name and last name, just like that. But what that's going to do is it is going to restrict the ability to set these just like we did before. And it's going to require us to pass them into our constructor here, like that. So that really wraps up the basics of properties. They are, as you can see, very versatile, very readable, easy to use, easy to encapsulate, and just all around a great feature of the language. Next up, we're going to be taking our first steps into inheritance. So thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Happy coding, and until next time, as always, take care.